Guys, the Premier League is back and back with it is all the drama. We're going to be covering the Brighton versus Man United game, a game which leaves us with a lot of talking points. Brighton running out as winners, deserved winners, I would say. Uh, the game could have been a 1-1 draw, no doubt about that. Got the goals from Welbeck and Jao Pedro and the goal from Ahmad for Man United. We're going to be covering the game in its detail, but for Man United fans, they must be thinking... This looks like the Man United of last season, even with all the signings that they've made, um, quality that they've put in, the infrastructure changes that they're making across the club. They may just be thinking like, "Here we go again," and they <laughs> they might not look, uh, they might not be wrong to be honest with you. Seeing what we've seen from the Man United team as of recent, um, Fulham and this game haven't been overly impressive in their style of play. Uh, but we're going to get into the, the detail of the game. Coming into this game, I knew it was going to be competitive. Brighton has shown their quality against Everton and, and shocked many, including myself. And um, again, they might have shocked a couple more in this game. Coming into this game again, um, they were riding high with that win against Everton and looking to build upon momentum. Man United looking to do the same. Possession-wise, as you can see in the stats, was fairly um, aligned, fairly similar. Expected goals, uh, Brighton had the advantage there in 2.12 expected goals in comparison to Man United's 1.41. And there's a lot to go into the game, the starting lineups, what I think uh, caused this. Uh, but as you can see in the, at the start of the game, very, very even game, ebbed and flowed. I would say throughout the game it was very, very open. No team had um, complete domination of the game, I would say. However, I think Brighton had more kind of longevity and it, and it shows in the momentum graph. They had a little bit more uh, momentum um, in, in larger parts than Man United actually had. And with that goal um, that they scored, it was evident of that. So we saw the defensive frailties with Man United, like, which have been called out time and time again. Uh, Maguire missing the ball, Martinez missing the goal, ball. Maguire missed the ball twice, to be honest with you, before Danny Welbeck slotted it in. Uh, great work from Matoma. Great work from both wings for Brighton. That's one of their calling cards. I think their front four as a whole is really, really impressive. And they were good value for their 1-0 um, lead going into the half-time break. And it was all on Man United to see what they could do. Again, we're going to go into the starting lineups, But going into the game against Brighton with the same lineup against Fulham, which... Let's be honest, didn't work. Um, I think it was a big, big mistake. And he, Ted Hag made the same change that he made against Fulham, taking off Mason Mount, bringing on Joshua Xerxes. And he may have thought, you know, this is the change that's going to bring me the win. Go Starting off the second half, it really wasn't looking that way. Brighton actually gained a little bit more control than they had in the first half. And it took um, a, a period of time when they didn't take the opportunities, Brighton. I remember clearly Minta having a ball. He was a constant threat. Um, he's shown his quality. I think he's missing or lacking an element of that um, that killer IQ from a winger decision making. I would say, uh, and and he gave away the ball. Man United were very very swift with the ball. Mazwawi into Ahmed um, dribbling into the box, getting his strike off deflected. Yes, but the intent was there, and Man United were back in the game one one. And from that goal, they seemed to even gain more control, more confidence, and it looked like they were on the ascendancy. Um, but it continued, it continued, it continued, it continued. Uh, and then we had the disallowed Man United goal. Joshua Zerxi was ruled um, for striking the ball just as it crossed the line. Heartbreaking for Man United fans. I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit weird, strange, funny when it happened. Um, but I can imagine if it was my team, I wouldn't be amused. No, no fault or blame on Xerxes. He wasn't trying to do that. He wasn't trying to get the last touch. You know, sometimes players will be greedy thinking, OK, I want my moment of glory. Two goals, two games, I'll look like the star. No, he was actually trying to get away from the ball. Um, but just due to the nature, nature of the goal, how the ball was, how the ball came in, he missed it the first time round. Garnacho actually got the strike off. As he's sliding on the wet surface, he knocks it in accidentally. Heartbreaking for him, heartbreaking for Man United. And I feel like that took a little bit of steam out of the uh, wings of the Man United team, to be honest with you. And at the end of the game, Brighton was still fighting, very, very competitive. Uh, and we get Jao Pedro with the winner. He was class all throughout the game. And we're going to go into the individual players. As mentioned, we've covered the la last minute goal from Jao Pedro. Great work from Simon Adingra. Um, and a couple um, talking points that I want to go through. Again, spoke about it last week when, when talking about... Man United, I think they've got two really, really good fullbacks. 
Um, and I feel like they were tested today. One of the bigger tests that they'll face in the Premier League, Matoma, Minta, Adingra, very, very difficult. I think Masrawi continues to show his class. Um, Diego Dalot, quality player. I've got to be honest with you. Um, I wasn't too fond of him when he came into the league, but he continues to grow into um, a really physical player, someone who, um, you know, as a, as a winger, you're not going to have an easy day. And um, he, he continues to show his quality. Um, that, that That's one of the, you know, a bright sparks from Man United's perspective. Outside of that and the Ahmed goal, um, no, not much, not much at all, if I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to start with Man United very, very briefly. Wasn't impressed by either of their centre-backs, Martinez, Maguire, not good enough, to be honest with you, in terms of this game. Martinez shown it a lot more. Maguire, I, don't, I really don't know what Man United are waiting for. Get De Ligt into the starting lineup, get him embedded in, and let's continue from there, because there's no point of you know, continuing this exercise. Maguire's had his moments, yes. But he should be a rotational centre-back for you at best. He shouldn't be fixed into the starting lineup. Casemiro and uh, Manu. I was expecting a lot more from Casemiro. He played well against Fulham. He was decent today, nothing special. Kobe Manu hasn't started the season on fire, in my opinion. Looked like the game kind of passed him by in parts. Um, Ahmed, we spoke about the goal. His general play was okay. He went missing that pass during the game. Rashford was non-existent. If I'm a Man United fan, I'm thinking, why are we still continuing this experiment? Why is he starting? Oh, wait, we've got um, Anthony on the bench. That's why he's starting. The wings are suffering. Jadon Sancho is not getting an opportunity. You've got to try something different. You, but when I say you've got to try something different, please, 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 please stop starting Mason Mount. I know Eric Ten Hag has come out now and he said, oh, Mount was injured. That's why I took him off. No, Mount was playing like a bum. He's been playing like a bum. Two games in a row. I think that rating that they're giving him on, on football 5.8 is even, it's generous. It's very, very generous. I think he was non-existent. He's been one of the worst signings in the Premier League that we've seen over the last couple of years. And it continues year on year um, with Man United making these signings, these big signings, which we think are going to have a major impact and they don't. Bruno playing up top again. Nothing special. I wouldn't I wouldn't single him out for criticism, but I still think um Man United need to get Joshua Xerxes starting if they they don't have any of the other strikers fit. He should be starting. I don't know why he's on the bench. No one's benefiting from that. Uh, but please stop starting Mason Mount. It's not working. It's really not working. Now, on to Brighton. Firstly, I've got to give all my props to them, to their manager, one one of the youngest managers in the Premier League, the youngest manager in the Premier League at 31 years of age and he set his team up perfectly 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 this is going to sound very very strange but Jason still has done a fantastic job there was a little bit of a debate last season in terms of which goalkeeper was starting for Brighton Jason still has won the job and he's kept the job his ability to not only make saves but to actually distribute the ball at, at a very high level in the system that Brighton play you've got to give your props off to him the back four was as solid as ever um, Van Hink was really, really good, um, showed his quality. Um, but I think the standout players for me were two of the central midfielders. Billy Gilmore pretty much was the best midfielder on the pitch, followed by his partner, James Milner, who was looking timeless. Um, runs from the edge of the box into the box. He was working as hard as ever, considering his age, considering the mileage he has in the Premier League. Very, very impressive. The front four for Brighton, I think they've got some of the most adaptable pieces, um, some of the elements that you may not see in other Premier League teams, the hard-working elements. Both of their wingers, all of their wingers, Adingra, Minta, Matoma, track back at a really, really good rate. Jao Pedro works very, very hard. You wouldn't even think um, that he's you know an attacking midfielder when uh, his team is defending. He's there um, adjusting the shape that they're in from more of a like 4-2-4 four, four, back into a 4-3-3 because three, three, he drops back into midfield and supports um, the defensive effort so well. And, and Danny Welbeck is a 100th career goal. What can you say? Um, timeless uh, talent. Played at some of the biggest teams. But he seems to be having one of his best periods with Brighton. And you got to say, long may it continue, honestly. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the players who came off the bench. Heartbreaking for Joshua Zerxi, to be honest with you. Um, didn't mean to stop that goal from going in. 
Um, but not only did it impact him, it impacted Garnacho, who struck the ball. So um, their impacts were, were limited. I think Garnacho was pretty good coming off the bench, to be honest with you. He made some of the right decisions, uh, but I think his teammates sometimes didn't. And um, it's, it's, yeah, it's difficult. I think he should be starting. I don't know why Rashford would start over him, to be honest with you. Get him on the pitch. Um, some of these decisions just don't make sense to me. Again, De Ligt didn't have much time, but he probably should be starting. And Scott McTominay came on the pitch and started playing as a striker. Um, he scored many goals from there, but if that's your tactic coming into the new Premier League season, you can't blame fans for being you know, apathetic from what they're seeing. So, guys, that's been my review of the Brighton versus Man United game. Very impressed from Brighton. They're going to be a force this season, no doubt about it. Um, and the signings that they've made, not all of them have been, even been integrated into the team. They've got so many injuries. And I think I'm going to, you know, have a little bit of an egg on my face from my predictions early in the season to where they would finish. Man United, again, I think there's questions. I think they've made good signings this season, but their style, the way they play, the competition they're going to come up against really, really puts into question what their ceiling is. And uh, this is a crucial season for, for Ten Hag to get right. Uh, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, leave some comments on, on what you think each team should be doing to progress, get better, what should they do in the rest of the transfer window. And um, guys, I'll catch you next time. Peace.